My name is Josh Bloom, and I teach astrophysics. This course is about big questions, but perhaps one of the deepest and most powerful questions we ask is the question, what is my significance? And in the 20 years that I've taught this course, I've come to realize that that is ultimately what this course is about, pursuing an answer to that question. So with that being said, I want to take you on a brief journey to provide some of that information and perspective with you. So I want to start with the Earth. And to understand uh, our place in this universe, we have to begin to wrap our brain around immense scales. And to do that, it helps to use an analogy um, with a scale that we're relatively comfortable with. So I like to use the size of a classroom. If I shrunk the planet down to the size of that classroom, how big would a city like San Francisco be? And the answer is, is that if the Earth were the size of this classroom, imagine we're in one, that San Francisco would be about the size of a penny, about the size of your thumbprint. And inside of that thumbprint lives hundreds of thousands of people. And on this scale, a single human being would be about the size of a speck of dust. And in fact, a home would be about the size of a speck of dust. And there would be people living within that speck of dust. And that gives you a sense of kind of how big we are uh, compared to an earth the size of a classroom. We would be barely microscopic. Now, if we continue on our journey, if we now shrink the earth down small enough so that the sun can now fit in the classroom, the earth would shrink down to a much, much smaller size. Here is a picture of the sun and the earth to approximate scale. The sun is about 100 times the diameter of the earth, about 1.3 million times the volume. And so if you imagine putting the sun in a classroom, the earth would shrink down to the size of about a softball, something you could hold in the palm of your hand. Now, remember when that softball was the size of a classroom, human beings were on the order of a speck of dust. We've now shrunk that classroom size earth down to the size of a softball and humans have now gone with it. So when you get to the size of the sun being the size of a classroom, uh, humans have disappeared from being microscopic. But that's just the beginning of the journey. If I now wanna build a scale model of the solar system that fits in the classroom, I have to shrink the sun down small enough so that the orbits of all the planets can fit within the walls of that classroom. In order to do that, I would have to shrink the sun down so small that it would become the size of a single grain of sand. And so if you walked into that classroom, uh, all you would see was this bright glowing speck in the middle of the room and orbiting it around it would be particles of dust, each of which represents a planet, one of those particles of dust being Earth. And you wouldn't see those particles of dust because, again, they'd be microscopic. All you'd see is that bright glowing spot in the middle of the room. So remember, when the Earth was the size of a classroom, we were the size of a speck of dust. When the solar system is the size of a classroom, the Earth itself is now that speck of dust. If we now shrunk the sun down so that it became one of the hundreds of billions of stars that are in our Milky Way galaxy, such that we could build a scale model of the entire galaxy in that classroom, we would have to be able to fit two to 400 billion stars in that disk that fits within a classroom. Just for reference, 200 billion pennies stacked together would take up the entire footprint of a full football field 10 stories high, that's 200 billion pennies, which just so happens to be about the number of pennies in circulation. That's the number of stars on the low end that are in our galaxy and the sun is but one of those pennies. So if you imagine now trying to build a scale model of the galaxy um, in our classroom, then the sun, one of a few hundred billion stars, would now have to shrink down to the size of a single atom amongst two to 400 billion other atoms. And so as you walked into that classroom, you would see this glowing disk of light, but you wouldn't be able to necessarily make out any one individual star, they're so small. Now, what's interesting is that on this scale, when the galaxy is the size of the classroom, the solar system itself is now a speck of dust. So remember, the solar system is a speck of dust when the galaxy fits in the classroom. If I blow that, or blow that solar system up to the size of the classroom, the Earth is a speck of dust. And if I blow the Earth up to the size of the classroom, human beings are a speck of dust. So we're a speck of dust on a speck of dust in a speck of dust. Now, it doesn't end there. 
our galaxy is one of a few dozen galaxies in what we call a galactic group, all gravitationally bound to each other, slowly swarming around each other in, in space. And so if we were to shrink our galaxy down to fit that entire galactic group in our classroom, then each galaxy would now be about the size of a bottle cap. And you would have a bottle cap once every meter or so floating out in this room, a few dozen bottle caps floating in the room, and that would represent our galactic group, each of those bottle caps containing hundreds of billions of stars. Now, galaxy groups cluster together in clusters and superclusters of galaxies that make up the larger substructures of the universe as a whole. And so our local group is part of a supercluster we call the Virgo supercluster made up of hundreds if not thousands of separate galaxies. And if we were to fit that whole supercluster in the classroom, then what we would basically get now is galaxies shrinking down to the size of about a baby aspirin. And you'd have little one meter wide clusters or so of baby aspirin, um, and they would be sort of clustered throughout the room and that entire grouping of clusters of these little baby aspirin sized galaxies, that would be equivalent to a supercluster. Now, our observable universe is made of a vast network of superclusters of galaxies. The observable universe itself contains hundreds of billions and even recent estimates suggest perhaps even trillions of individual galaxies, each of which has on average hundreds of billions of stars in it. And so now if we were to shrink our galaxies down so that we could actually make a scale model of the observable universe that fits in a room. Imagine you're in a museum and there's a display that's got a scale model of the observable universe and you were to open this door into this room, what would it look like? Well, what it would look like is this vast cosmic web, like cobwebs running from wall to wall, floor to ceiling. And on every strand of cobweb, there would be a sprinkling of dust. And each of those grains of dust on every strand of that cobweb filling the whole room, each of those grains of dust would now represent an entire galaxy. So again, when the observable universe is the size of this room, our galaxy is a speck of dust. When that galaxy is the size of this room, our solar system is a speck of dust. And when the solar system is the size of this room, the Earth is a speck of dust. And when the Earth is the size of this room, we're a speck of dust. So again, we're a speck of dust on a speck of dust and a speck of dust floating around in a speck of dust and the vast cosmic web of specks of dust that make up the hundreds and billions and trillions of stars in our observable universe. Now, when you consider the fact that recent findings show that planets are a common byproduct of star formation, that almost every star probably has planets around it. Not only do you have hundreds of billions of stars within each of the hundreds of billions, if not trillions of galaxies, but you have many times more planets that exist throughout the universe. When you look at those sheer numbers and you ask the question, how likely is it that our planet is the only one that has spawned any form of life on it, you can see it becomes almost improbable that we're alone in this universe, let alone alone in our own galaxy. So this itself gives us some perspective. Now I'll end with this. It is now a serious scientific hypothesis that our universe may itself be part of a vast network of universes that is now termed the multiverse. And although there is no direct evidence for the existence of a multiverse yet, um, there are some things in theoretical astrophysics that imply that multiverses or a multiverse is perhaps quite likely, including the very fact that we exist at all. Um, it may be the case that most universes don't have the right conditions for life, but if you run that experiment enough times, occasionally you'll get one that does. And so the fact that one that spawns life exists at all may itself be evidence that there are many other universes out there for us to actually be probable at all. So what do you think of that? 